Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much uh, for coming to the second term of, series of our webinar series. Uh, this one uh, focusing on different parts of the digital technologies curriculum and technologies that fit within that. And this one is gonna be on microbits, specifically focusing on a secondary context um, because you, know, you can do quite a lot with microbits, they're incredibly popular, um, but we'll just be looking at what how it applies to secondary specifically. There is a parallel webinar going on right now in primary. So if you are a primary teacher and you wanna look at that one instead, then uh, head on over to our website and I won't be mad at you if you, if you leave. But you know, this is the secondary webinar. Um, and my name's Owen, um, by the way. I'm a computing education specialist at the Australian Computing Academy. And I also used to have a previous life as an electrical engineer. So if you do have any questions about microbits or engineering or stuff like that in general, then I'm probably a good person to ask. Um, so I just wanted to give you a bit of a demo on what you can, what sorts, the types of things that kids can do with microbits to see what the sort of outcomes are. And this is from the uh, National Computer Science Summer School that we run at the University of Sydney every year. And this is uh, the shepherd and his sheep. Um, so for the, the goal of this is they've got some micro bits that are driving these robots. And the goal of this activity is to get your little shepherd's uh, stick and uh, herd all the, sh all the sheep into the pen. <laughs> um, and they do this with digital technologies. You can probably argue that, that you're combining this with um, PDHPE with uh, movement, for example. Um, but uh, they've, they've come up with an interesting activity and written the code to do that and produce some type of outcome. And you can do all sorts of wild things with the micro bits. And the thing that we really want to emphasize is that the micro bits do enable to you to do absolutely anything. So pretty much anything that you can think of, you can uh, go ahead and make and create. And we're going to go through not how to make a sheep out of a micro bit, but what tools you can use as building blocks to achieve an outcome like that or something, um, something similar or different. Um, so the overview of what we're gonna go through today is what the micro bit is and looking how to do stuff on it. So uh, how to display stuff on it, how to get input in various ways through the sensors or through the buttons, and then uh, have a look at the radio, so how you can wirelessly communicate using the micro bit around, around the room. So hopefully we'll have a bunch of demos. And if you do want a demo live coding request, I am open to those. So just type in the chat um, and, and, and let, let me know. So this is what the micro bit looks like. It has a display of five by five little LEDs, has two buttons, has an accelerometer which can detect um, changes in acceleration or which orientation the micro bit is, has a compass, a temperature sensor and Bluetooth. And so it's got a whole bunch of things that you can uh, use to do all sorts of types of applications. But a question for you all, and if you could use the annotate features again, um, have you used micro bits in class before? So you know what I'm talking about, or if this is brand new to you, so put a stamp in um, in which uh, which whichever box is applicable to you. There's no prerequisite to attending this webinar, by the way. Uh, good. I like people how are selecting the correct stamp that um, that fits with their with their one. That's good. All right, except for that person. Only one lesson. <laughs> That's fine. Um, that's fine. All right. So there's a bit of experience. Okay. Uh, good. You're, you're getting a bit creative. All right. So a bit of a mixed experience, which is which is fine. Um, the good thing about micro bits is that um, it's very easy to get started. So we'll uh, we'll start from uh, no uh, assumed knowledge um, at all. Uh, there's two options. To programming micro bits, block based. Um, you can use make code or uh, inside the Grok learning program, there are uh, block, you can use Blockly to program the micro bit. And text based, 
Um, again, MakeCode has options for that. Um, we have options for our courses and you can also use a external editor like Mu. Um, and we're gonna be focused on the text-based uh, method today because in secondary school, um, we should get students to start use, doing text-based programming and they should be moving away from block-based programming if they're following the curriculum. Um, and so I'll be focusing on uh, text-based programming of the microbit in this particular webinar. And we'll be using MicroPython um, specifically. And it's pretty easy. I think um, Python is by far the most common language taught for schools in, to, in high school. And if students already have that knowledge, then they can apply it, it the same knowledge to using to the microbit as well. Parts of this slide did not load. That is very helpful. Wow. Ah. All right, why did that do that? Try reloading. That has never happened to me before. All right, I'm just gonna close the thing and do it again. Ah, oh, because I put a GIF in there. I'll show you the GIF. It doesn't, I made a GIF, hello world. So just to give you a demo of what it should look like. I was gonna live code it anyway, but uh, Google Slides does not like GIFs apparently. Um, so lots of this, I'll be live coding what the code actually is so you can see it work in the simulator. Um, the first line of every program will be an import statement and we'll just use the display to display some stuff. Um, in this place, in this example, it will scroll the text, hello world. Um, so if I go to my simulator and probably should have, We'll go there. Um, I'll just delete this text, sorry. And I will zoom in. Um, uh, today. Um, if I run this code on this simulator, you can see that the text G'day is scrolled. Is that showing for everyone? My, uh, my bordering window is, give us a tick, thank you. Thank you, Nicolette. Um, so we can scroll some text, it scrolls whatever we type. Um, can I, internet people I can type whatever I like in there and it will just scroll that on my um, display um, so that's uh, so there's a, there's two lines here um, the first line which will be preloaded for for all of you is this from microbit import star which means import everything inside the microbit module um, that includes this display object which lets us talk to the display. So we can just say display.scroll, um, whatever message we like. If we comment out that line and try and run it, it'll have an error inside the Grok Learning Platform. It will highlight where that error is and it will scroll the error message across the display. And one thing that will be very useful to you to, if you're teaching this in class, you can get the errors by looking at this output tab and in there um, it'll give you the Python output error. So here on line two, it says, gives me a name error saying display was not defined because I've commented out where it gets that from. Um, um, so that's just a bit of an introduction to how we can display stuff on the screen and how you can uh, look at the console to get um, what the error actually is by looking at this um, output tab. Um, not only can we write text, we can, all, uh, we can also display images. Um, so the first image that I wanna always show is a duck because why not? Um, so instead of display.show uh, scroll, I'm going to use display.show and there I can write image.duck just like this and run that code and then displays a duck. Um, um, there's lots of pre-built images here. Um, 
So image.happy might be a common one that is used, in which case it will show a happy face. Um, there's a giraffe, which displays a giraffe. Um, but there, unfortunately, there's no dogs. Um, so if the image does not exist, it will try, but it'll give us an error. And the error, there's no attribute dog. Doesn't like dogs. Or cats, actually. Um, that, that, there's a whole bunch of pre-built images that um, are used. Uh, you, you can also give it a list of images. So um, instead of only one, um, there's a few inbuilt lists. I think one is called all clocks. So you can get it to uh, make a clock face go around. Or if you want to define your own, my animals, if you're a farm, you can go image.cow and then image. Oh, what was, hopefully I've spelled that correctly. Um, if we run this code, you can um, go from a cow to a tortoise, which is what most students, well, it's what I certainly want to do. Um, but if I run it once, how this program gets executed is it just executes line by line, just like a Python program does. And it goes line one, line two, line three, line four, and then stops. Um, but if I wanted to loop this, um, the, the show um, function has some um, uh, optional arguments here. So we can um, make it loop forever. So here we can put set loop equals true, and then it will always show, but what, um, always um, loop through this list forever. Uh, so there's lots of uh, quite uh, neat things that you can do very easily just by um, adding these optional optional arguments here. So we can display my animals and um, um, cow and a tortoise. I should have probably made it a, uh, like a, um, a church or something that it could be holy cow, but um, I wasn't smart or fast enough. Um, and you can change the delay. Um, the delay is in milliseconds. So if I want to make it slower, I can make it 1000 milliseconds here. And then it should change between each image um, every second. There's lots of neat little things that you can do to change how an animation works um, just by modifying just a little bit of code. So uh, hopefully that is all fairly under as understandable. Um, that's, so, so that's a nice, easy way to make animations and then um, uh, put delay 200 and then um, add this loop argument in. You'll notice in the slides, I have another argument here, which is this weight equals false. And I think this gets to a new concept in embedded systems that I wanted to at least explain, which is um, whether something is blocking. Um, what that means is if, it, if it's blocking or non-blocking, if this display, um, this is currently blocking because I've set the loop equals true. What that means is I can uh, try and make a happy face after that line, but the happy face will never ever show because what loop equals true means, it just means loop this line of code forever. So everything after this line can never ever execute, which means that this line here blocks anything else from happening. However, um, you can also make, uh, use this weight equals false, which means get this uh, play this animation, but get play it in the background and keep running the next line of code. Um, um, so here, you can probably predict what, what might happen, but I can explain it. It'll um, try and play this animals animation try and loop it forever. However, it weight will be set to false, which means it can still go to the next line. And so it'll start the animation, but then immediately go and show a happy face. So this line isn't actually displayed at all. 
what's this actually useful for? So if you wanted it to display um, this animation until I press a button, which I'll get to doing buttons in a, in a minute, um, but I'll show you now. Um, if button A that was pressed, um, display.show. So we want to show the animations, but then it will keep showing the animation forever. But when I press the button A, it will, um, uh, the next part of the code is running, so it will show a love heart now. Um, so that just gives you a bit of a demo of um, what, what blocking means and what not blocking means. Um, so wait equals false means play it in the background. Wait equals true means wait until the animation finishes before running the next line. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you all. Um, I just wanted to show you a few things that the micro bit uh, can do. Um, there's lots of inbuilt images on the micro bit. Uh, we've made a poster that you can uh, download and print yourself. Or if you uh, come to one of our in-person workshops, lol, then we'll give you one. Um, we've probably got a lot of posters actually, which we could potentially post out to you. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we have made a poster that you can print off yourself, which is if, if you are doing a micro bit, it can be a handy um, point of reference. There's a how to use the micro bit and what images exist um, posted there. You can find those um, on our website, um, which is a bit of a handy reference. Um, so we're still gonna talk about images, but uh, not only can you just do inbuilt images, you can also make your own. And I just wanted to sort of explain how they work. Um, so a custom image, is just going to be using some text with a value of zero to nine for the brightness of each individual pixel. And each row is separated by a colon. Um, what this means is this sad uh, image string um, steps, just describes what uh, each row of the custom image um, will, be, will be presented. So um, the first row is all zeros and so at the on the micro bit, you can see that all of the pixels are off. So the brightness is zero, which means they're off. On the next row, there's the second and the um, fourth pixel are on. So it's zero, nine, zero, nine, zero. And nine means full brightness, which means uh, show the eyes and set the others to off. On the third row, everything is off again. On the fourth row, we have the top of the mouth and on the fifth row, we have um, the rest of the math. And so this just describes um, what this image actually is. And we can just use the image uh, class to call on that string to show this image. So that is actually inbuilt, but this is how you can uh, make your own. So we've got a quiz for all of you. Um, get out the stamp tool and make a stamp on which uh, image is being displayed here. It's one of these four. See if you can um, put a stamp on which one it is. All right, I'll give you a, a bit of time to to read through the image. Okay. Got a couple of answers. Well, I think we can say it's not a happy, uh, happy image. <laughs> okay. All right. I think. Uh, okay. Most of the. I think we've got a bit of a consensus, and you are all correct. It's the snake image. Um, well done. This is the snake emoji, or the Microsoft version of the snake emoji, and so the snake emoji. Oh. Actually, the butterfly was not on the second slide. I forgot to add that, oops. Um, you can see it's not a butterfly because even though the top corner is the same, um, the top right-hand corner is, is different. And so you could just look at the, the top corner and see, or there's lots of different things that you could look at. For example, 
the bottom row was completely zero. And so that, that was the only one that that condition satisfied. So that could be an easy way to figure that out. Uh, excellent. Top of the marks, everyone. Um, where did my annotation panel go? Uh, clear all drawings. There we go. Um, so that's how you can uh, create images. Um, but also you eventually want generally when we're using um, micro bits or these types of embedded systems is to connect it to the real world. And that's um, the real point of difference in using things like a micro bit or an Arduino or a other type of system which um, is small and easy to program is that you can connect it to the real world and display real things or you can make things like you can make your own um, sheep that you can herd, for, for example. Um, but uh, taking um, information from the real world and uh, deciphering what it actually means can be a little bit tricky. And so a way that we can do that is um, we can get values from the real world and print them to the console to see what those things actually mean. Um, so for example, um, I'm gonna write this program, but in Grok we can uh, use the printing values. Sorry, Richard, I'm gonna mute you. Um, we can print and, and see what the values actually are. Um, so, oh, that's very helpful, all my tabs are. This one. All right. Okay. Sorry, my accelerometer is here. So if I have this code, I'll just explain what it does. Um, while true, which means do this forever. Um, get the X, Y, and Z values of my accelerometer and then print those to the console. So, and then sleep for 200 milliseconds and then do it again and just do that uh, forever. Um, so you don't see any output being displayed on the micro bit, but what, if you click this output tab, you can see that it's printing three different values, zero, zero, and minus 1024, which is just the default position that Grok has given our simulator. What you can do is we can orient it this way. I can drag this um, little box here. And then when I change it, the uh, X, Y, and Z values have changed when I uh, change the simulated orientation. So, you can see that the numbers are scrolling past. And so um, that's a good way to, um, for example, often projects that we do with students is they might want to detect a star jump. We'll just get values of what the threshold is and um, they can plot those values and uh, see what the numbers actually are. And this also links quite closely to the, um, uh, data representation in secondary, um, uh, looking at um, uh, representing a movement as uh, as a number. So everything is represented as whole numbers. And so um, accelerometer or a temperature value will just produce a voltage and that will be represented in the system as a particular number. And then um, that number might mean something. Um, and so, so that uh, covers the data representation component in the curriculum as well. Um, uh, help, uh, helpful for data, um, there's also gestures. So accelerometer, I, do I know how to spell? Uh, probably not. So if accelerometer, I think it's a was gesture um, up. There's different inbuilt gestures. Um, so it means <clears throat> what this was gesture means is instead of looking at those numbers directly, <clears throat> 
we can look at some predefined uh, accelerometer numbers to see what orientation it is. In this case, is the um, is the micro bit up? I'll see if I can get it to up. Maybe not. I'm not sure if it'll uh, if I, if it'll let me get to the micro bit values, but I'll I'll do a demo of that working on my actual micro bit um, in a minute. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do. And it's important with the micro bit, just like I said earlier, you can link this to different parts of the curriculum. Um, and um, the micro bit is a great way to do lots of cross curricular activities. I mentioned things like health. You can program your own beat test using the radio, for example, and, and looking at different parts of the digital technologies curriculum, as well as just programming. There's um, the data representation and networking aspect as well, which I'll get to. Uh, in a little bit. Um, but I do want to cover generally in this webinar lots of things that uh, some teachers um, can be a little bit confusing. Um, and so this can this is to do with button pressed. Um, but specifically is pressed worth versus was pressed. Um, so I did a demo before where we were pressing buttons. Um, is press means is the button press right now? And was press means since the last time I called was pressed, has the button been pressed? Which might be a bit confusing, um, but I'll give you a demonstration and I'll, I'll, I'll show you what, what, what this actually looks like. Um, so, um, stop that code before I can run it. So, if button A dot, um, is pressed. Happy. I can verify that the buttons work. Yes. Um, I can program. That's good. Um, so what I'm going to do is going, going to set a count variable. And then I'm going to increment count every time this um, if statement evaluates to true and then I'm going to print that to the console and I'm also going to um, play our image. So if I run that code now and then I hit the button, I'm just going to tap it quickly. We get a tick. I tapped it. But if I look at the output tab, you can see that that ran uh, 431 times. Um, and which is a lot of times. And that just gives you an indication of how fast the micro bit runs. Even though to me, I'm just pressing that up and down incredibly quickly. Um, the fact that this is a simulated device might mean there's a little bit of lag. Uh, however, is press, which means is the button press right now, we'll just cycle, we'll It'll be this while loop will move so fast that it actually checked this condition 431 times before it became false again. Um, and so this is where what was press comes in. Um, um, so if I do was pressed instead, and then I press the button, I pressed it once, it only shows it once. And then if I press it again, I pressed it twice, um, three, four, five. So you can uh, get an exact count of how many times you've actually um, pressed the button in order to make it easier to just do a button press. And they call this type of thing um, um, button debouncing, which means when I press a button, I only want it to uh, run the thing that I do that I want once instead of 431 times. Um, and so Microbit has an inbuilt way of doing that. Um, and that works for both, um, both buttons as well. So um, is pressed and was pressed. Um, generally, you just want to use was pressed, but there are certain circumstances where um, is pressed is better. Um, if you want to write your own um, was pressed, um, you can uh, um, see if I can do this on the fly. Um, 
has been pressed. Um, okay, this will only do it once. Um, hopefully this one works. Yes, it'll only ever do once because uh, there's no way to do it again. But uh, just use was pressed is the, is the simple answer. You can um, use a different variable to check that if you want to uh, um, uh, have, and they call this a flag where you have a, a variable that is true or false, which can verify something has been pressed or not, but um, just use was pressed. I just wanted to show you all that. Um, Okay, uh, does anyone have any questions on the micro bit so far? Does that all kind of make sense? Um, just type in the chat if you do have um, any questions at all, um, because I wanna get uh, to um, by far the best feature in my opinion of the, mic the micro bit has, which um, is not really available easily on many other um, cheap systems, which is uh, the radio. So it allows uh, two uh, microbits to communicate wirelessly with each other, two or, or more. And so you can create your own networks in a classroom. Um, and it's, um, it's very helpful to, um, you can practically teach some of the um, networking aspects of the curriculum um, as well and implement it yourself using, using the microbit. And I'll um, demonstrate how, how, you can, how you can do that. Um, so fundamentally using the radio, we're communicating from one thing to another thing. And so we'll need multiple micro bits. Um, so on one side, on the left here, we've got a sender, which is just gonna send a message after a button has been pressed. Um, and the receiver will just receive that message and then display uh, whatever that message um, happen, happens to be. Um, so I can give a demo of that, I think. Um, not that one, not that one, not that one, radio. Uh, I think it's this question here. Okay, so this is a question on our networking course um, that we've written um, that I, any, you can, have your students do this course um, for free if you like. Um, thanks. Um, so what this program is going to do is receive messages um, from the sender and print out whatever that um, um, message says. So in this example, the sender is sending the words ahoy and I'm gonna write a receiver to receive um, receive that message. Um, so how to do that? Um, we turn the radio on first. Um, um, radio um, I'll receive um, a specific message and save it in this variable called message. And importantly, I'm going to write this if statement which is if, if there is a message there at all, um, I'll scroll it to the display. And if there's not a message there, then it will just continue checking um, forever. So in this particular example, the sender is sending the word ahoy and my simulated micro bit is receiving that message. So on, on the Grok platform, um, we can check that my code is correct. Yay. Um, and the important thing is that this code will work for any message, not just um, this particular example. Because um, I didn't write the word ahoy anywhere in this code. However, um, that is what is displayed eventually when, when this little simulated micro bit sends it over, over, the, over the network. Um, uh, excellent question. 
um, Nicole. Um, so yes, yes, you can. And I'll get into how you can do that. Um, so the best way to do that is just to give each student a number. And what they'll do is they'll um, either set a channel. Um, channel equals seven is the default, but channel from, I think, zero or one through to 83. I'd have to check the documentation, but you can have um, at least 83 different um, networks if you want. Um, in a classroom, so just give each student a number and then just get them to set a specific channel. Um, um, and so the only microbits of that channel can communicate with other microbits that are on the same channel. Um, you can also do um, groups uh, and groups is on the same channel, but you can have different groups within each channel. Um, so you can have 255 different groups uh, on 83 channels, which you can do the maths is, you could have thousands of different networks all working together in one classroom and they wouldn't interact with each other. Um, so you, yeah, there's no limit to how many microbits you probably, I think your school can afford that many microbits. Um, uh, there, there are a few, uh, this is a great opportunity to talk about security. <laughs> so for example, and if I wanted to, um, there's, I don't know, if there's 85 channels or something, um, radio. Dot, ah, it wasn't actually radio.on. Radio.config is where you set that channel equals um, seven is the default. Config um, channel equals i, and then radio.send. You can, um, this is, uh, this program I'm just showing you is what one would call uh, spamming every channel. <laughs> um, and so it's, a, it's, I mean, kids will do this anyway. Um, and this is a good opportunity to talk about security. Our, our microbit networks are not very secure. And so to, you can discuss with your class what ways you can implement to check um, to prevent against spammers, for example. Um, and there's, there's a few examples of that in, in, in our courses. Um, but there, it's good, uh, yeah, it's good to talk about security and get kids thinking about what ways they can um, implement to protect against um, people spamming, for example. Um, a simple answer might be using a different group that the spammer doesn't know but the spammer might also try and spam every group. But um, yeah, uh, there's, lots of, uh, there's lots of different um, methods there. And if you have, um, if you have uh, any thoughts, um, um, please let me know. But there's, lo there's lots of um, different methods that you can, you can do. Um, depends on your application. But um, that's how you can uh, communicate together. Um, oh, it was also in the slides. Um, so, um, using this group um, word can is a way to differentiate, um, and you can check the the micro bit uh, documentation has um, lots of um, um, there's every every command that exists there can be found in the documentation. So um, you can find all of the um, the what what every uh, radio does, what all the display does um, in the documentation as well. Um, so I was going to give you a demo. Say you wanted to actually build a project instead of doing everything in the simulated platform. Um, you can download code um, from um, the Grok platform and then load it onto your uh, microbit. So I'll give you an example of that. Not a um, was pressed. Um, what image should I show? Uh, I'm going to show a duck. If I run that and then press the button, I get a duck. If I stop and download that, it will give me a hex file. And I'm going to, I have a microbit plugged in. Uh, download my microbit. And the way in which you can copy code onto a microbit is just dragging the hex file onto the particular microbit. 
and I might, you can see it loading. And eventually I'll, uh, I'll stop my screen share and show you when I, uh, how do I spotlight my video? When I hit the A button, it should be a duck. It's magic. Um, not really. Um, but um, that can be a bit inconvenient. So instead, what you can do is use the Mew editor. I'll get to that in a, in a bit. In a bit. Um, and so this is just a free little text editor that has a micro bit built in. You can see it auto completes, which is um, nice. Uh, image dot duck. And then I can just hit the flash button to write that code onto my onto my micro bit. So if you can see my little webcam, there's a duck showing. Ah, uh, and it crashed. No, it didn't. It's good. Um, and if I make it sad and what's going on? I think it has crashed. No, no. All right. Okay. No, it definitely has crashed. I'm sorry. I'll restart it. I love giving live demos. Um, all right, you don't want to see that code. Um, import star. What image should I show? Um, I'm going to show a giraffe. I thought we moved past this, but evidently not. Okay, I'm not sure what the problem is. Oh uh, no. There we go, it's working now. I have a giraffe. Um, Yes, excellent question, Carmela. Yes, the radio is part of the library. I'm not sure why this one keeps on crashing, but I probably need to update it. Um, uh, you can just, um, it's not part of the microbit module, but I can just go import radio. And um, now I've imported the radio module. So I might make my group equals 30. Um, and then while true, um, radio dot send spam, well, spam, spam on group 30. Um, so it's, it's generally better to, uh, use the buttons. What is this? Um, radio dot send. Um, so that's, that's how you would, um, use the radio, um, exactly. But, um, the feature that I did want to show you, uh, was to do with plotting. Um, so I'm going to get values. Um, if I print them as a tuple, which is just separating them by, uh, putting brackets around them, tuples are just like a list, except you put normal brackets instead of square brackets. And the difference between a list and a tuple is that um, you can change lists, but you can't change tuples. And that's pretty much it. If I flash this program, assuming it doesn't crash, which is, you know, not necessarily um, a safe assumption. Uh, yes, Carmela, our radio is just sending messages across the room. It's not sending audio. Um, um, but it, it uses the Bluetooth antenna. Um, and so it, it sends messages at the same frequency as Bluetooth messages do. Um, uh, so that's how that works. Um, so I think this code is working now. We will test it by uh, clicking this plotter data. And so now it's plotting me three numbers. Um, so if I tilt the micro bit to the left, you can see that green number goes down. If I tilt it to the right, 
the green number goes up. If I move it forward, um, I think the blue number went down and then the blue number went back when I tilt it forward and backwards. And if I tilt it upside down, the that orange value uh, swap signs. So it's giving me the X, Y, and um, Z values. Um, uh, Jody, uh, this is the first problem I've ever had with this program crashing. Generally, it's quite reliable. I was testing it out before the webinar and it was working fine. Why it's crashing now, I think that's just because I'm running a webinar and it just doesn't like me. Um, but there's probably a later version than this um, version that I'm running, which is an alpha version. Um, but you can get this from uh, code with dot new mu. I should learn how to type. Um, or you can just Google um, mu mu editor, and it, it'll come up. Um, you can just download it there, and you can run this on on your students' screens. Uh, and that's much better to. It's not a fully featured. Um, developer environment, but it is a great way to get students to um, connect really easily with the um, micro bits. So for example, here, I'm running the program locally and I can get my terminal down the bottom, my Python terminal. So I can um, type commands here and they'll be running on my little device. So you can see it's now showing a happy face. And so I have a regular Python terminal here. And if I hit the um, control D, what that will do is send a reboot signal to uh, my micro bit, which will reboot and then run whatever program I'm, I've written onto it. And so hitting control D will send a reboot signal to say reboot now and then run whatever code you have. And that's how I can see the values being printed out um, on the device, but it seems to have uh, crashed again. Um, uh, so, so that's how you um, move away from some platform, whether it be make code or um, Grok or any, any platform that you use and can then go towards building your own projects much, much more easily. Um, I just showed you that. Um, so the good thing about, um, micro bits is that you can build sort of stuff in the real world and actually cover the curriculum in a much more broader sense because you can use elements um, from the real world. Uh, so for example, uh, we've written a sport course, which is a HPE course, um, which is the radio to, you can think of applications as well, where you can use different um, parts of the micro bit to achieve different parts of the curriculum, whether it be, um, getting uh, sensor data. I think our smart gardens are quite popular as well. Um, and if you haven't seen it, I would strongly encourage you to look at our unpack the curriculum section on our website. Um, it's aca.edu.au slash curriculum. If you look at the seven, eight section, so I'm going to click on seven, eight unpack. Um, and scroll down and here you get everything, the whole digital technologies subject on a page and explained in plain English. So some of the things we covered was um, hardware specifications, um, describing networks and transmitting data and a bit of basic cryptography. And you can cover all of these um, with the micro bit. Uh, Nella asks, can the sender receiver role switch back and forth between them two micro bits so they can send instant messages to each other? Uh, yes, you can. Um, I can demonstrate that if you like. Um, so say you want to do the sender part saying um, if button a dot was pressed, um, you might want to import radio and then turn it on. You want to, um, <clears throat> radio dot send hello. And also do message equals radio dot receive and then if message um, and message equals hello 
Um, uh, so this is an example of that uh, Nella, where it's doing both the roles. So this part is the receiving part, and this part is the sending part. But it's one; it's on the one program, so you can do you can do both. Um, and if you're just, just like uh, Sajatha said, you can have some agreed messaging system. So, um, and if you want to learn how to do this, then the Microbit networking course that's on our on our website. It's free for uh, all students. Um, uh, you can, it'll do exactly that. Um, so these are the courses that we've um, written on our website. Um, you can find this at aca.edu.au slash resources. And these are free courses just to learn um, some of this. These are all aimed at secondary. We've got some integrated um, HPE and Smart Garden and networking and just regular microbit programming. And also network security is a bit more advanced at a sort of year nine, 10 level um, to focus on the security aspect, but that uses the, the micro bit um, as well.